fair Hippolyta. Our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. Oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep you tonight, and four nights will quickly dream a time away. Therefore, the moon, like a silver bow, new bed of heaven, shall behold our night of solemnities. Go, Philostrate. Stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the pert and nimble spirits of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love doing thee injuries. <laughs> but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revel. Happy you, Theseus, art now duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation, complied with complaints against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung a feigned voice versus a feigned love, and stolen her fantasies with voices of thy hair, rings, gods, and seeds, gnats, trifles, no taste, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailing and unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient language of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law we have provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? And be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. But he in himself is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held worthy. I would my father look but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I may hold, nor how maiden serve my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed to Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether, if you yield not to your father's desire, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I, to be in shady cloister mute, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they that master so their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly or happy is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin thorn, grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So like grow, so live, so die, my lord. Ere of my virgin hath unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Will then, sweet Hermia and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right? You have her father's love, Demetrius, let me have Hermias. Do you marry him? Oh, scornful, Lysander! True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all of my right to her I do say unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortune's everywhere as fairly ranked as Demetrius. And, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch into his head, may love to need our daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, don't devour. 
proudly dolt, dolt an idle tree upon the spot of an inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. Oh, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. Demetrius thinks not so. He would not know all that he do know. And as he errs, 
doting on her Nia's eyes. So I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, holding no quantity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid tainted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. As waggish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. As Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, herein we need I to enrich my pain to have the sight thither and back again. generally man by man, according to the script. Here is a scroll of all the men in all of Athens thought best fitted to play in the interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then say the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. It is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merit. Now, good Peter Quince, say the names of the actors. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Here, Peter Quince. Say what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Pyramus? What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself. Most gallant for love. Thou will act some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measures. To the rest, yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. I play Heracles rarely, or a part to tear a cat and make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus' car shall shine from far and make a mar the foolish bait. This was lofty. Now, good Peter Quince, name the rest of the players. This is Pericles' vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. You must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? <laughs> it is a, a lady that uh, Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You will play it in a mask and you will speak as small as you will. <coughs> Let me play this beat too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. This <laughs> beat, this beat. Oh, here, Miss Beer, my lover dear, lady dear, oh, this beat here. <laughs> no, no. You will play Pyramus and you this beat. <laughs> well, proceed. <laughs> Robin Starling. The tailor. Here, pretty quince. <laughs> you, you will play Thisbe's mother. Um, Tom Stout, the tanker. Here, pretty quince. You will play Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Um, Snug the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play well fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me for I am still a study. You will play it semaphore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I'll roar that I'll make any man's heart good to hear. I'll roar that I'll make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. <laughs> no! <laughs> you oh. will play. For if you played the lion's part, you should do it too terribly that they would shriek, and that would hang us all. That would hang us, everybody's son. Friends, friends, 
If you should scare the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I'll roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I'll roar you as to any nightingale. No, no, no! You will play Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet faced man. A proper man. A man with a face such as you would see on a summer's day. Therefore, you needs must play Pyramus. Well, I guess I'll let you take it. What beard do I miss to play then? Why would you well? I could discharge I could discharge in neither your straw colored beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and grain colored beard, ooh, or your French crown colored beard, the perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all. Then you'll play bare face. Yeah. I request you, desire you, and entreat you to calm them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile out of town. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of property such as our plain desires. And there we may meet and rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's oak we meet. Enough, hold or cut bowstrings. Your warrior love, 
to Theseus be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity? How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Canst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Paraginia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair angle break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hail, in dale, forest or mead, by a pavement fountain or by rushy brook, or by the beach and margin of the sea, to dance our ringless to the whistling wind. But with thy brawl thou hast disturbed our sport, therefore the winds piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land have made every pelting river made so proud they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman hath lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere in his youth a taint of beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and the crows are fattened with the marred flock. The nightman's morris is filled with mud, and the quaint vases in the wanton green for lack of tread are undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is not with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air, that rheumatic diseases do abound, and thorough this is temperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary headed frost fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and at old times thin an icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, childing autumn, angry winter change their wanton liveries, and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are the parents and original. Do you admit it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Obra? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Oh, set thy heart at rest. Fairyland buys have a child of me. His mother was the votaress of my order, and in the spice of Indian air, full often she hath gossiped with me and sat on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed to see the sails conceived and grow big bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty own swimming gate following, her room then which with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles, and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal, of that boy did die, and for her sake I do her up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood do you intend to stay? Perchance until after Theseus' is wedding day. But if you shall patiently dance in our rounds and move my rebels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I shall spare you your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away, we shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way then. Thou shalt not from this grow till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle love, come hither. Thou rememberst once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song. And certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. Sure, sure, ma'am. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress pass it on, in maiden meditation, fancy free, Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love and idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I should be once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me that herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a leak. I'll put a dirt around the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, 
I will watch Titania while she's asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I will make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible. I will overhear their confidence. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where are Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll stay, the other stayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen unto this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not? In plainest terms, tell you I do not, nor I cannot, love you. And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me that as your spaniel, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me a leave, unworthy as I am to follow you. What worse place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog? <laughs> Tends not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege. For that, it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I will run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wild is half not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin, the mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bucus when cowardice pursues and valor flies? I will not stay thy questions. Let me go! Where if thou follow me, do not believe that I shall give you mischief in the wood. I in the temple, the town, the field. You do me mischief? By Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men we do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of a hell to die upon my hand I love so well. Hackers in the 
must grow buds and some to kill rubber mice for their leathery wings to make mice ma elves small coats and some to chase the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wanders on our quaint spirits. Sing me now sleep and then to your offices and let me rest. You spotted snakes with double tongues, thorny hedgehogs be not seen, newts and blind worms do no wrong. Come not near our fairy queen, Philomel with melody, singing our sweet lullaby, lullaby. When thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear, hard or boar with bristled hair. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some black thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the woods. And to speak, child, I have forgot our way. Well, rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander. Find you out of bed. For here upon this bank, I'll let rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one trunk. Nay, but Lysander, for my sake, my dear, why farther off yet? To not lie so near. Oh, take the sense, sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean that my heart on tears is knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchanged with an oak, so then two bosoms in a single trope. Then by her side, no bed will be denied, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Well, I say the riddles very prettily. Now much to shrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia would say that lies in your lie. But, judge friend, for love and courtesy, why further off? Human modesty. Such separation may well be said that becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er often to thy sweet love ends. Amen, amen to that fair prayer, say I. And then end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed, sleep give thee all his rest, and look half that wish, which your eyes be pressed. Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force and stirring love. Night and silence. Well, who have we here? We do not concede off where. This must be the man my master says despise the Athenian maid. And there the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this. Lack love, this kill her, see. Sir, all upon the eyes I throw, all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakes, let love forbid, sleep its place on thy eyelid. So wake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon.
Danny, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou darkly leave me, do not so. Stay on my peril, I alone will go. I am out of breath in this spot, Chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright, not with salt tears? If so, mine are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear, for beasts that make me run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel though, Demetrius do as a monster, fly my presence thus. What wicked and dissembling glass of mine could compare to Hermia's spirit eye? But who is here? Lysander, on the ground, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, but sir, awake. And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art, but through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? All oh, fatal word, is that vile name to perish on my sword? Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though we love your Hermia, Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who would not change a raven for a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are the worthier maid. Things grow are not right until their season, so I, being young, am now ripe not to reason. Now, touching the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will. Well, I look into your eyes, and I see that I love you. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When in your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough. It's not enough, young man, that I never did, no, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye, but you must flout my insufficiency. Good trope, you do me wrong, but sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. But very well. Perforce I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. For as a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. And as the heresies that men do leave are hated most of those they did deceive, so thou, my surfeit, and my heresy are hated of all things, being the most of me. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Eight and six. No, let it be 
you two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, a line among the ladies is the most fearful thing. But you gotta consider with yourself to bring in God among us. For is there not for there is not a more dreadful fearful than your wood foul than wood foul than your line living, and we ought to look to it. We should have a prologue, another prologue, stating that he is in fact not a lion. Actually, let him say his name. And have half his face be seen through the lion's neck. And let him say thus, or to the same effect, ladies or fair ladies, I wish you, or I will treat you, or I will request you, not to fear, not to tremble my life for you. For if you think I come hither as a lion, it's for pity on my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there let him say plainly he snug the joiner. So it shall be so, but there are two problems. One is bringing moonlight into the chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe speak by moonlight, says the story. Doth the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar, a calendar, look at the almanac. Why no moonshine? Why no moonshine? Yes, it does shine the night. Why, then, may you leave a casement at the great chamber's window where we play open, and the moonlight shall shine in at the casement. <laughs> Aye, or else someone will have to come in with a lantern and bush of thorns and say they are there to disfigure or be the person of moonshine. <sighs> then there is another problem, bringing a wall into the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe speak their chink in the wall, says the story. But you can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bob? A person or a thing should play wall and let him have some plaster or some loam, maybe some rough cast about him to signify the wall. And let him hold his fingers thus and through this cranny right here shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that is the case, all is well. Now come sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. Once you have spoken your speech, enter into the tiring house. And so everyone according to his views. What happened, homespuns, have you swaggering here so near the cradle of the fairest queen? A play toward? Guess I'll be an honor. An actor, too, if I see fit. Here it is. Speak! Thisbe, stand forth! Oh, Thisbe, the flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors! O. Durs! O. Durs, savor sweet. <laughs> so have thy breath, my dearest Thisbe, dear, and by and by I will to the air be. But hark, a voice. Stay it thou, my dear wife. Stranger Pyramus than ever played before. <sighs> must I speak now? I, Mary, must, for you must understand that he has gone but to see a noise he has heard and is to return. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, of the color like the red rose on the triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile end. Eat most lovely Jew, as true as the truest horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Minnie's tomb. Ninus's tomb, ma'am, why you mustn't speak that yet, that you answer to Pyramus? You speak all your lines at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter! Your cue is past. It is never tired. As true as the truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, it is a Oh, how oh, 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 terrible! Run, masters! Fly, masters! Help! I'll think, I'll follow you. I'll lead you about and around, through grape and bush, through bog and briar. Sometime a horse I'll be, sometime a choir, a hog, a hound, and a headless bear. Sometimes I will roar, and I will neigh, and I will grunt, and I will burst. 
and asks no one, fix it on his head. A knock and his thisbe must be answered. And when forth my minute comes, his fellows, as wild geese, the creeping fowler eye, or russet painted chops, all in sort, rising and pawing at the gun to court, separate himself, madly sweep the sky. Their fears thus strong, make their senses thus weak, make senseless things begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel well snatch. Some sleeves, some hats, some yielders, all things catch. So I let on in this distracted fear, and that sweet peer was translated there. And in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this falls out better than I could devise. Oh, but hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the maiden by his side, that by force when she wakes, he must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same thing. Well, this is the woman, but not this man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on thy bitter foe. Now I'm a child, and I should use these words. For thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain my standard in sleep, paint over shoes and blood plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun is not to turn to the day, see to me. Would he have stolen away from sleep and heard me up? I'll believe as soon as whole earth may be born, and that the moon may through the sun be free. Just so as pleased his brother's new type with the antiquities. It cannot be that thou hast murdered him. So should the murderer look. So dead. So grim. So should the murdered look. And so should I. Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty, yet you, the murderer, <coughs> as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, what thou gives me? I had rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog! Out, cur! Thou hast driven me past the bound of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth, be never numbered amongst men. Oh, once tell true. Tell true, even for my sake. Hast thou looked upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch! Could not have worked an Adam do so much. And Adam did it with a doubler tongue, and thine off servant never had her stung. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. And from thy hated presence, part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, for bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe, which now in some slight measure it will pay. If for his tender, Ugh. Here, I'll make some stay. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turn true. Then fate overrules that one man holding troth. A million fail, confounding oath and oath. About the wood goes swifter than the wind. And Helena of Athens, look thou find. All fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see, thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she to appear. Uh, uh, I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, as the Venus of the sky, let her shine as gloriously when thou wakest, if she be by, beg her for remedy. Captain of our very band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth, who is to find me, pleading for a lover's feet. Shall we their fond pageant sing? Lord, but fools these mortal feet. Stand aside. The noise we make, they make, will cause Demetrius to awake. Aye, then two will at once move one. That must need be sport alone. Yet, those things.
things do best please me, that would fall preposterously. Why should you think that I should woo and scorn? Scorn and hurt should never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep, and vow so void, and their nativity altered the peers. How can these things to me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. Which truth kills truth? Oh, devilish holy fray. These vows are hermias. Will you give her over? Wait, oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put in two scales will even weigh, and both as light as tails. I had no judgment, but to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her over. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you.
celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me forsooth affection? But by your setting on, by your consent, what though I be not so embraces you, so hung upon with love, but miserable most, to love unloved, this you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. I do persevere counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold a sweet jest up. This for well carried shall be chronicled, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not swear for so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I swear by this, which I'll lose for thee, to prove it false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than she can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it true. Quick, come! Lysander, where to tense all this? Awake, you peace you? No, no, no seem to break loose. Take on as you would follow, but yet come not, for you are a tame man. Go! Hang off, thou cat, thou bird, vile thee! Let loose or I'll shake thee from me like a serpent. Sweet love, what change is this? Why have you grown so rude? Thy love? Ow, Tony, totter, ow, love, the medicine or hated potion hence! Do you have jest? Yes, stupid, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I receive a weak bond holds you. I'm not trust your word. What, should I hit her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate thee, I'll not harm her so. Why can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore, oh me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am spared now as I was in a while. Since night you loved me. Yet, since night you left me. Oh, why then you left me? The gods forbid and earnest shall I say. I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Tis no jest. Now be certain that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me! You juggler! You canker blossom! You peep of love! What, you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, I faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What? Will you share impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Bye. Bye, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet? <laughs> Why so? Ah, oh, that way goes the game. I do perceive she had been compared between our statures. She had urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, she had prevailed him. What, are you grown so high in this esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I must look that my nails and riches of my eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I am a right made for my cowardice. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. Though you think that she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. And lower part again! Good, Hermia. Do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Ever keep your counsels. Never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius. He threatened to spurn me, strike me, nay, to kill me. And now, will you let me bear my folly back to Athens? I will go. I'll follow you no further. You see how simple and how fond I am? Why, get you gone! Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave her behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid, Helena, she shall not harm me. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. Though she be but little, she is fierce. <laughs> little again! Nothing but love and little! Why do you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf! You men of us are not by us made, you beat, you acorn! <laughs> you are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not on Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not, now follow if thou darest to see thine of mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I 
will go with me, cheek by jowl. You mistress! All this coil is long of you! Nay, go not back! I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your first company. Your hands are quicker for a break. My legs are longer, though. To run away!
By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night. Oh, long and tedious night. Abate thy hours, shine comforts from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight. From these that my poor company detest, sleep, that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from mine own company. Still with grief, come one more. Two of each kind should make up four. Ah, oh, here she comes, all cursed and sad. Cupid is an age clad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so woe, be dabbled with the two of the the briars. I can no farther crawl, no farther go. My legs can keep the pace of my desires. Here will I rest me, till the break of earth, and the heaven shield like Sander, if they be afraid. On the ground, sleeping sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakes, thou should take true delight in the sight of thy former life. <coughs> in your waking, the old country proverb shall be known. And in your waking, it shall be shown that Jack shall have Jill, and all shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. I then did ask her of her changeling child, which is 
straight away, she gave me. And her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as a fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be thou, be as thou was wont to be. See as thou was wont to see. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon? What visions I have seen! Methought I was enamored of an ass! There lies your love! Oh, how came these things to pass! Oh, how I loathe his visage now! Oh, silence a while! Robin, take off his head! <laughs> Titania, music call, and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five scents. Music ho, music such as charmeth sleep, when thy waste with thine own eyes deep. Sound music! Come, my queen, take hands with me. And rock the ground whereupon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus in all jollity. Fairy, fairy king, this attendant heart, I hear the morning lark. Then my queen, in silence sad, Trip we after the night's shade, we the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Speak it, ye. 
Aegeus, is this not the day that Hermia should give the answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go with the huntsmen, wake them with their horns.
peradventure to make them more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. Is there? 
there no play? What rebels are at hand? Is there a play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Philistrate, here my Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mass? What music? How shall we beguile the lazy time if not with some delight? There is a brief how many sports to write. Make choice of what your highness will see first. The battle with the centaurs to be sung with an Athenian eunuch to the hawk. Oh, well, none of that. That I have told my love in glory of my kinsman, Hercules. The riot of the tipsy Bacchanals, tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. Oh, that is an old device. And it was played when I from Thebes last came a conqueror. The thrice three muses mourning the death of learning, late deceased in beggary. Well, that is some satire, keen and critical, not sorry with a nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe, very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. <laughs> that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? I play, there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I can at a play. For in all the play, there is ten words long. A tribal one of the lord it is, for pyramids there in death kill himself, which when I saw curse, I must confess, made mine eyes water. The more merry tears, the passion of loud laughter, never shed. What are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which have never labored in their minds till now. And now have soiled their unread memories with the same play against your nuptial. We will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world. Unless you can find sport in their intents, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never can anything be amiss when simpleness and duty tinter it. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see much of the poor charge, and duty in the service perishing. Why, angel sweet, you shall see no such thing. But he says that he do nothing of his kind. Well, the kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they would say. And what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have purposed to greet me with premeditated welcomes. Where I've seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practiced accent in their fears, and in conclusion, dimly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet. Out of this silence yet, I picked a welcome. And in the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, Tongue tied and simplicity, at least speak most to my cat. So please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we offend, it is with our good will that we do not come to offend, but in good will to show our simple skill. This is the beginning of our end. Consider we do not come minding to contest you, but in despite. All the actors are at hand, and by their show, you should know all that you would like to know. This fellow doth not stand at one point. <laughs> <laughs> he hath to read his prologue like a rough cloak. He knows not to stop. A good moral, my lord, it is not enough to speak, but to speak true. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, he hath played his prologue like a child or a reporter. Perchance you wander at this show, but wander on, 
Tell the truth makes all things plain. This man is Paramus, <laughs> if you will know, this judicious lady, this be a certain. <laughs> this man with lime and rock cast thou present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through that wall's chink where two poor souls they are content to whisper at which no man's wonder. This man, with a lantern, dog, and bush of thorns, presenteth moonshine, for if you will know. And by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus's tomb. There, there, it will. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name. Along comes Thisbe, alone at night, did scare away, or rather, did fight. This lion, vile, with a bloody mouth, did stand. And as she fled her mantle, she did fall. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet, youthful, and tall. <laughs> this blade, this bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling breast <laughs> to find his trusty Thisbe Terry in mulberry shade. He drew his dagger and he died for all the rest. Now, let, now, let lion, moonshine, Wall and lovers twain, at their discourse they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. <laughs> it is no wonder, my lord, what a lion may when many asses do. <laughs> Fall that I once now by name present a wall. And in this wall I have you think in a cranny hole or a chink. Through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did often whisper the very secret. This line, this rough cast, this stone doth show that I am the same wall. The truth is so. And through this crane it is, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? <laughs> <laughs> it is the weirdest partition that I ever heard discourse, my lord. Well, Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence! Oh, grumbled night. Oh, night with you so black. Oh, night, whichever art one day is not. Oh, night, oh, lack, lack, lack. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. Thou wall, O wall, O sweet and lovely wall, that standeth between her father's ground and mine. Thou wall, O wall, O sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink thee with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Just shield thee for this. But what do I see? No this me do I see. O wretched wall, from whom I see no bliss, curse thy stones for thus deceiving me. All we things, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> no, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to come on now and meet me at the wall. Oh, yonder she comes. <laughs> oh, wall, who often hast thou heard my mind, for parting my fair pyramids and me? 
my cherry lips have often kissed <laughs> 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 Thy stones with lime and hair made up in thee. Is that my Thisbe's voice I see? To the chink I go to spy, so I shall hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe. My love, thou art my love. <laughs> Think what thou wilt, I am thy grace. And like Lamander, my trusty still. And I, like Helen, till the fates me kill. Not Shaffleus to Prochorus was so true. Shaffleus to Prochorus, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kissed the wall's hole and not your lips at all. Oh, <laughs> meet me at any soon straight away. Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Oh. <laughs> That lived 
that love, that light, that look, the cheer. Come tears, come found. Out sword and wild, the path of Pyramus, thy left path, or heart the pop. Thus die I, thus, thus, thus. <gasps> now I am dead, <laughs> now I am fled. Time to lose thy light, and then take thy flight. No, I didn't. Die! 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, die, but an ace for him, for he is but one. He has not an ace, for he is nothing. He's dead. <laughs> oh, with the help of a surgeon, he might recover and prove an ass. <laughs> is the better. He for a man, God born in us. She for a woman, God bless us. She hath already spied him with those sweet eyes. Thus she means Vanillicent. Asleep, my love. What? Dead, my dove? O Pyramus, arise, speak, speak. Quite dumb. Dead, dead, a tomb. I must cover thy sweet eyes, these lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. Oh, his eyes were as green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore. Since you have sure. With shears, his thread of silk. Tongue out a word. Ugh. Come, trusty sword. With blade, my breast and broom. Farewell, my friends. Thus is the end. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Oh, 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 oh. epilogue or a Virgo madness dance between our two companies? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. Never excuse. For when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. Marry, if he that thrid had played Beerus and hanged himself in this beast's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. And so it is, truly, and very notably discharged. But become your Virgo master. Let your epilogue alone. Now our thought. Not a mouse shall disturb this hollow house. 
I was sent with room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house, give gathering light by dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and every sprite pop as light as birth and bride. Hand in hand with fairy grace, now we will bless this place. If we shadows have offended, think with this and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And in this weak and idle dream, no more yielding but a theme. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we shall mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have an earned luck, now escape the serpent's tongue, else the luck puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends.